Hello. Hi, everyone. Thanks for joining. Uh, we're just going to wait a few more minutes uh, just to get everyone filtering in from the uh, main webinar uh, and then now joining this one. So uh, this session is going to be primarily for Q&A. Um, so if you have any burning questions, just uh, hopefully you've um, you've written them down and you'll be able to ask us any questions. Um, if you have any questions actually right now that you'd like to post in our chat, you can, uh, you're more than welcome to do that. Um, and we do have a couple of moderators here with us today. Uh, I guess I'll introduce them now. We have uh, Ms. Slomka, who is one of our uh, girls health and phys ed teachers at Northview. And we also have Ms. Uh, Ms. Chow, who is another one of our um, uh, health and phys ed teachers. Thanks so much, Ms. Chow. So you can see them there uh, on their, uh, they, they're sharing their webcams with us. So that's awesome. Uh, so again, if there are any questions uh, related to um, the program, uh, please fire them away in the chat and I, our moderators will be able to kind of queue them all up and we can hopefully get started maybe right now actually. So if there are any questions, uh, again, my name is Mr. Fiorio, Julian Fiorio. Uh, I am the APCA coordinator, and um, I'm here to answer any questions about the program. Well, this is awkward. <laughs> okay. Uh, what is writer's craft? Okay. So, uh, Writer's Craft is a grade 12 uh, sort of English-based course. Uh, it does um, uh, relate to, um, uh, I guess, some of the core course requirements that are required for uh, NCAA um, uh, eligibility. So we do recommend uh, that uh, students who are pursuing uh, an NCAA scholarship um, would take uh, or register or enroll in um, writer's craft in grade 12. So, um, I guess the next question here is, uh, does the training for the sport need to occur during a certain time, only mornings or afternoons? Uh, I guess to answer that question, um, the answer is no. Uh, the training really can, it just depends on a case by case basis with, with each particular student. Uh, every sport um, and every schedule is, you know, unique uh, to each student, uh, student athlete. So sometimes I have students who train in the morning. Um, for example, uh, I have some tennis players, swimmers, uh, and even figure skaters who often take uh, first period off in the morning so that way they can uh, finish their training, and then they'll come to school for our second period of the day, which starts around 10 o'clock. Uh, alternatively, sometimes I have students, uh, and probably most of my students in the program, uh, require some uh, flexibility with their afternoon schedule. Uh, so those students will take uh, either the last period of the day off or sometimes the entire afternoon off, uh, which would mean that they leave school early, they travel to their training and get their training done. Um, and kind of the third thing that often happens is sometimes I have students that train sort of in the mid to late evening, and they don't really require much flexibility with their timetable. And so for those students, what we do is we will give them a spare, usually in the middle of the day, uh, and it gives them an opportunity to get some homework done, study for quizzes or tests, evaluations, or complete any projects or assignments that they have outstanding. Um, so we kind of can be flexible at any point in the day to accommodate a student's training schedule and demands. Hi, Mr. Fiorio. Your next question is, it was mentioned that 
Uh, one of the criteria for admissions is involvement in sport during season. My daughter interested, is interested in golf, but there was no golf this spring or summer due to COVID. How would this account, how would she account for this? Right. So um, all of the athletes that are in the program are currently training and competing um, in their sport outside of school. So they don't rely on Northview's athletics program to provide them the opportunities to play in sport. So if your daughter is, I think it was your daughter, sorry. Uh, if your daughter is a golfer, then she would be involved in her own uh, training and competitions that occur outside of school uh, with her own club and coach and or her own team uh, for golf. Sorry, um, can you hear me? Yeah. Uh, so, hi, I'm Sunny. Uh, my question was, um, because there was no competitive uh, golf during the spring and summer, um, okay. she wasn't able to do a lot of tournaments, like she just did a handful of them. Yeah. And so it's just wondering if that's taken into consideration or how what we're supposed to do oh, in terms of that. I understand. Thank you for clarifying the question. Okay. Uh, yeah. No, just because often I get uh, students or parents who are asking like, oh, I want to join the, the school to play on your sports team. And like, that's not how this program works. But thank you for clarifying. I understand the question now. Uh, yeah, absolutely. It'll be taken into consideration. I mean, we're living in a global pandemic here. So uh, of course, all of these, um, you know, sports competitions are, you know, most of them are being put on hold and obviously uh, students aren't able to compete. Um, but that's why I'm asking for, and if you noticed in my support materials, I mentioned um, sort of an evidence of your training or competition schedule, just to get an idea of what the students are doing outside of school, um, like on a regular weekly or even monthly basis if possible, just so I can see if they would qualify kind of for the accommodations that are required for the program. Awesome. Thank, Thank you, Mr. Fiori. The next question is, do applicants need to provide a grade seven report card? Um, okay, so in the past, we have um, uh, requested that a grade seven report card uh, be submitted with, uh, with the application. Um, it, the board is, um, uh, the TDSB has, has, has asked that we don't really request that now, but if it's something that you would like to provide me, it does help me uh, understand a little bit more about the students, especially with regards to what the teachers write in the comments. Do we have to um, do so while it's not a requirement, I do, I do appreciate it. Um, uh, so if you did want to send me your report card uh, from grade seven, uh, that would certainly be helpful in, uh, in the consideration process for APCA. Wonderful. I'll, the next question is what level of Taekwondo would I have to have to be accepted? Uh, that's, a, that's a tricky one because I know with Taekwondo, there's kind of two realms of it. There's, uh, if I'm, I'm sorry if I'm mispronouncing this, the Pumse, which is like more of like the Kata style or forms. And then there's actual sparring and, and competing in kind of striking competitions. Um, so it really depends on, I guess, the amount of training that's being done. Uh, and also the kinds of competitions that the, the student athlete is attending uh, and participating in. So um, it's really a case by case basis. Um, and again, I mentioned in this in the, in the presentation earlier today, tonight, uh, was that most of our athletes are training approximately 10 hours or more per week, uh, you know, give or take, depending on the sport and season. But um, so, you know, if, if a student, if, if you're competing and training in Taekwondo around 10 hours or more per week, then that, that would certainly, excuse me, that would certainly meet the criteria for uh, gaining entry to the program, uh, at least in terms of considering you uh, for the program. Wonderful. The next question is, can we apply in grade 9, grade 10, grade 11, and will we, will we be able to play on the school sports team? Uh, great question. So APCA uh, does offer uh, acceptance in grades 9, 10, 11, and even 12. Uh, and it really just depends on whether or not we have space in the program. So most of the students gain entry from grade 8 to grade 9. But I have had students in the past apply uh, for their grade 10 year, grade 11 year, or even their grade 12 year, um, uh, you know, because they move into the area or they move from 
another province. You know, uh, for example, last year I had a, a wrestler come from Alberta um, and she was just here for her grade 12 year. So really um, she was only here for one year kind of thing. So we accept students at, uh, at any grade level uh, on the condition that there's space in the program. And I think the second part of the question was related to sports and playing sports for our school team. So there is a bit of, um, uh, I guess, a restriction with the sports that students can play. Uh, and the restriction is this. Um, actually, let me explain the non-restriction. Uh, if Northview Heights is the student's home school, meaning that if the student resides in the Northview catchment area, which is outlined on the TDSB website, you can see a map of what the catchment area is, then there are no restrictions for what sport that particular elite athlete or gifted athlete or APCA student can play. Now, if a student comes to Northview and they live outside of the uh, area, uh, of the catchment area, then there are restrictions on the sports that can be played. So uh, primarily they are related to team sports. So that's like hockey, soccer, basketball, volleyball, water polo, those kinds of sports that are team related. Uh, the reason uh, that exists is, is so that we, we don't have like this really stacked or loaded team with all these elite athletes playing on it, which makes the competition unfair for the rest of the high schools in the area who don't have a specialized uh, elite athlete or gifted athlete program like we do, okay? Uh, furthermore, um, it, Individuals, so if you're competing in an individual sport, for example, uh, badminton, swimming, tennis, um, track and field, uh, those kinds of individual sports, uh, students can compete for our school team. Uh, they can compete at the regional level, which would be against high schools in our local area. Uh, they could also compete up to the city level, which would be against all of the schools across the city. And that right now is the limit to which they would be able to compete. Uh, I have put in motions to OFSA, which is the governing body of uh, on, like uh, Ontario sports in high school, uh, to allow individual athletes to uh, potentially play at the provincial level um, and represent Northview. Uh, my motion got defeated last year. Uh, however, there was hope um, that this motion to allow, again, individual athletes only to compete at, uh, uh, at the provincial level, uh, there was hope that perhaps this year when I, I'm going to put in the motion again, uh, that it would get passed. So more to come on that. We'll see. Sports are on hold right now anyways, uh, but we will see what happens. But basically, those are the restrictions for uh, for athletes competing uh, at, at Northview uh, with our with our athletics clubs or, and, and teams that we have at Northview. So I hope that answered your question. Thank you, Mr. Fiorio. Um, the next question is about um, the level of competition to qualify. So for example, what is the qualifying level for a baseball? Is it like AAA hockey? Yeah, I would say that um, most of the baseball players are competing at a triple A level. Uh, and I do have some double A players as well. But again, we're looking at those uh, and we can consider double A players who are uh, kind of looking to make the next step and perhaps join a triple A club uh, and pursue their baseball careers uh, in a more high level. Okay, great. The next question is from an athlete who says, I'm currently in two programs, martial arts and in a volleyball club. I take martial arts weekly, as well as my volleyball. Can I still apply for this program? Uh, certainly you can apply for the program. It really just depends on sort of the level of commitment that you are giving to, to each particular sport or discipline. So um, it really depends on the number of hours you're spending uh, competing or training in your sport. Great. Our next question says, um, do all your students require spares? Is this program an appropriate program for an athlete who already balances academics with their training program? What would this program offer the student in this case? 
Um, so because we, we have uh, built in to the APCA program um, uh, either lunchtime courses or blended e-learning courses, uh, a spare would be required um, in, in some point of the day, uh, whether it's in the morning or the afternoon, or it could be in the middle of the day where students will have an opportunity to get more homework and assignments and, and studying done. Uh, so I guess the short answer is, is yes. Uh, however, I have had some very, I guess, um, you know, dedicated and motivated students uh, not take a spare at all, and they take five courses in a semester. Um, this is not recommended. <laughs> uh, most students at the high school level take four courses in each semester uh, for a total of eight courses in a year. And I wouldn't recommend that a student doesn't take a spare because then they're just going to be overwhelmed and overloaded with the amount of work that they have in all of their subjects. So I guess the short answer is that yes, a, re a spare is required if they are part of this program. Thank you, Mr. Fiorio. Uh, the next question is, if a student were to be in clubs, athletic programs and such, but weren't at a provincial, a national or regional level, would the students still be able to apply? A, so any student can apply. It doesn't mean that they're going to gain entry. Um, the admission criteria uh, really is that um, students have to be competing, uh, usually at a provincial level. Uh, we have taken students competing at a, region, uh, a regional level. That would be the absolute lowest we would go. Uh, and if students are only playing like a house league or a recreational uh, kind of uh, sport, um, or if they're just playing like, you know, outside with their friends kind of thing, that's not really what this program is designed to do. And, and, and this program is not designed to support those kinds of students. Okay, they would just be in a regular program at Northview, or any other school for that matter. Uh, this program, the APCA program is designed to support athletes who are training and competing in their sport, uh, like, our, and that are competing and training in their sport at, at least around, you know, 10 hours per week. Uh, that requires some flexibility in their timetable and some academic accommodations and support to make sure that they, uh, again, gain all the all of the credits that they need for graduation. Follow up question to that question, Mr. Priorio: Can applicants include achievements throughout their middle school years onto their application? Yes, they can, and uh, that is definitely encouraged for sure to include any achievements or awards or uh recent results from competitions or tournaments that uh, are outstanding for sure that can be included in the uh, application process wonderful this question was asked prior to your clarification um, around uh in area and out of area APCA athletes but just to clarify for track and field will we be able to participate in the OFSA? at this very moment in time if track and field was running right now, which is not, but if it was, then the answer would be no. So individual athletes would not be able to compete at the OFSA, which is the provincial level of high school sport. Um, I, again, I put in a motion last year, which got defeated. I will be putting in another motion this year into OFSA to allow individual athletes competing uh, in like things like track and field, swimming, uh, you know, badminton, those kinds of sports. Uh, to compete at the OFSA or the provincial level in high school. Thank you. Next question. Recognizing this is a very unique program, how many applications do you usually get per year and how many spots are there? Okay, uh, so as you can see from the APCA statistics, uh, in grade nine, we, had, uh, we have 30 athletes in the program right now. And that's kind of my, uh, I guess my target. I'd like to get 30 students in the, in the program. Uh, we actually accepted a few more than 30 um, this past year. Uh, we, I actually had two students drop out, move to a different school or move to a different house or location um, kind of at the last minute. So it, it, it went down to 30, but um, usually uh, we accept around 30 students per cohort year or grade year. Uh, and in terms of the amount of applications that I usually get, it's, um, like last year, I think I got around 45 applications, 40 to 45. I can't remember the exact number. Thank you, Mr. Friario. Uh, just a follow-up question. Can you tell us a bit more about the applicant's letter of intent? 
is this a personal letter from the potential student indicating why he or she is applying for the program? Yes, and I'm actually just going to pull up, um, hopefully I can do it really quickly. So I think I found it here. Yes, I have. Okay. Uh, let me see if I can quickly share my screen with you. Um, sorry about that. So this is the screen I'm sharing with you here. So this is our um, Northview Heights Secondary School website. Uh, it's, uh, and then if you click on uh, up here, specialized programs, and then on APCA, Academic Program for Gifted Athletes, it'll bring you to our web our webpage here, where we have a whole bunch of information about the program. You can watch my cool video uh, with our, the three athletes that went through our program. Uh, you can find some more information about how to contact me. Uh, it, it mentions our spin night, and uh, you can also click here to register. Uh, and then finally, it, it talks about some of the admission criteria. And then all of the support materials are listed here with some detail as well. So for the applicant letter of intent, uh, basically you want to outline the reasons for which you wish to be considered for the APCA. Uh, and some suggested topics include your strengths, interests, what you hope to pursue academically and athletically, description of your own leadership abilities and style, and how the APCA can assist uh, with your future goals, et cetera. So those are some of the suggested topics that I would recommend you talk about uh, in your letter of intent. Thank you, Mr. Fiorio. Um, we have multiple questions from uh, one person here. The first question is, if I get accepted into AB ABCA and HMST, can I attend both? Good question. So uh, in past years, you were allowed to be accepted to two programs. Uh, this year, the TDSB uh, ha announced that uh, you can only be accepted uh, and attend one program. However, uh, being that HMST and APCA are both in the same school, uh, if there is space in both programs, uh, then we could probably make it work. However, um, we cannot guarantee that. And um, you may have to make a choice uh, between APCA or HMST, uh, depending on the numbers of applications that we get and uh, and how many acceptances uh, we we offer. Okay, great. Then the next part was how important is the grade seven report card in my application? Well, the grade seven report card used to be used to um, uh, to look at the student's overall average and. Uh, the academic requirement for the program used to be a 70% average. Um, and the reason for that really was because when students apply for, um, well, for university, but also when they are considered for NCAA scholarships, uh, the GPA calculations are such that a 70% requirement uh, in high school is really the, the kind of the standard, or, or at least, you know, almost the minimum to get into uh, an NCAA school, so down to the States. Uh, and to be considered for uh, scholarship opportunities. So that's the reason why I had the grade seven report card um, in previous years was to make sure that students are kind of on track to earn at least a 70% um, from middle school to high school and then potentially to an NCAA scholarship. So uh, while it used to be very, well, it used to be a requirement, it is no longer a requirement, but I, I would appreciate if you did send me your grade seven report card. That being said, it's not gonna hurt or hinder uh, your chances of getting in because the admission criteria is really only um, uh, for students and well, student athletes who are competing at at least a regional level, uh, hopefully higher in, in terms of provincial, national, or international level. Thank you. The next question is, what is the most important element in the application? Um, I wouldn't say that anything is uh, important more than anything, although uh, in order to be considered, all parts of the application are required. So I would say they're all pretty equally important because, for example, if you miss submitting a, an optional attendance form or if you don't submit an application or if you forget to submit the letter of intent or a reference letter, then that will hurt your chances at being, um, excuse me, at being considered because it's an incomplete application. So 
uh, I would say all parts of the application are uh, vitally important to be considered for this program. Thank you. So the next question is, do students need a portfolio to send you? And if so, what should the portfolio outline? Uh, AFCA does not require a portfolio, but um, the fourth item in the support material does indicate that if there are any additional information or uh, you know, uh, if there's anything else that you'd like to add to the application in terms of your rankings or recent results or uh, you know, awards that you've won, then you can include those, I guess, as part of a portfolio, but it, I don't require those. Um, it, they're not uh, something that I require as part of the, the application, but if you would like to submit those, then you can. Great. Um, just follow up question to that. Uh, can we send images of documents and awards, et cetera? Yep. So everything should be emailed to me. Uh, so my email is julian.fiorio at tdsb.01.ca, which is uh, listed on the website that I just showed you. So all of that support material should be emailed to me in one email. Um, and I've also mentioned the uh, requirements um, in terms of like a subject heading for the email. So that way I know it's for the application process. Uh, and all of that is indicated in the application. So when you go online and uh, start filling out the Google form for the application, uh, at the end of the APCA section, it does indicate that um, you should like how to, uh, how to format your subject line uh, when you're sending me the email. So please look for that in the application uh, Google form. Great, next question. In regards to spares, would we be able to just be training at home or would we have to be at our training location to take a spare? Um, well, so in the interview process that happens after you submit your application, uh, interview process will happen in January, probably middle to the end of January. Um, that's where I'll uh, ask you when you would like your spare and basically, you know, ask for your schedule. Um, as part of the application process, you're, um, you're required to submit your uh, sort of your commitment, uh, outline your, your schedule, your training schedule and whatnot. So um, based on your training schedule, we'll determine when would be the best spare for you. So everybody's, uh, well, every student's uh, timetables are completely custom. Uh, like I said before, we have some students who take a spare at the beginning of the day, some students who take a spare at the end of the day. Some students who don't really require a spare at the beginning or at the end of the day take a spare in the middle of the day, so it gives them more opportunities and time to complete their homework and, and do the assignments. Um, so we can be completely flexible with when your spare is being scheduled in your timetable. Okay, thank you. Just the follow up question regarding um, report cards are eight, grade eight report cards required? No, they are not. Um, no. Okay, great. And then we had another question just regarding the letter of intent. Mm -hmm. um, and I believe you said there's more information for that on the on the website. Yeah, I'll quickly share the screen again. Uh, so on our Northview Heights uh, secondary or sorry, northviewheights.ca website, uh, academic program for gifted athletes page, you'll find all of the um, admission criteria and all of the support materials. So you can see here for letter of intent, it outlines some of the um, requirements and suggested topics that you should be including in your letter of intent. It also mentions the reference letter. It also mentions the evidence of training commitment. Uh, this is optional as I've indicated here with the asterisk, uh, if there's any other appropriate information that you'd like to add and also um, your complete uh, uh, optional attendance form signed by your uh, current principal at your middle school. Or if you're a, a, a high school student, it would be your, your secondary school principal. Wonderful, thank you. Uh, next question, does this program help you get into a good university? Um, well, if you're a, a competing athlete, um, you know, and, and if you're, uh, I, I guess, what's classified as an elite or exceptional or gifted athlete, then absolutely this program will help you uh, gain entry into a, a good program and a good university. Um, it, for the past several years, uh, pretty well all of our uh, athletes who have graduated from the program 
had gone on to some sort of post-secondary institution. Uh, and most of them get into the programs that, that are their first choice or at least their second choice for sure. Uh, and we even have um, several athletes per year who are gaining scholarships down to the United States, uh, either on a full, full ride scholarship or sometimes a partial scholarship, which can also be um, uh, topped up through their academics. So if they get uh, strong grades through this program and going to Northview, then they can uh, pretty much offset a partial athletic scholarship with a partial academic scholarship, well, which would it, basically turn into a full ride anyways. So uh, the, I guess the answer to that question is, is, is yes, for sure. Uh, this program definitely helps students get to uh, the next level in terms of both their uh, uh, athletic careers, but also their academic ones as well. Great. The next question is if we were to get into the program, but the pandemic continues and we weren't able to compete in tournaments or we didn't have upcoming tournaments, could we postpone and apply the next year for the APCA program? You certainly could. Um, you could also just come to the school and get your education and uh, still compete or well, not compete, still, still train with your, with your club or your team or your, or your coach in your sport. Uh, I've had several students who came into the program this year who are in grade nine now who, have, who are facing this right now. Um, they still joined the program. They're having a great time. They're enjoying the program as well. Um, and they're still able to train, obviously, uh, within their training bubbles. But uh, obviously, the competitions have kind of taken uh, uh, a little bit of a backseat right now. And they're, most of them are on hold. Uh, but the option is up to you. So. Um, if you would like to join us at Northview, it's a great school uh, and you can still, you know, get a great education here. Um, and if you would like to postpone and apply for another year, you could do that as well. However, um, again, if you do postpone and apply another year, there's no guarantee that you're going to get into the program because it's all based on the, the enrollment and the, the spaces that are available in each of the grades. Thank you, Mr. Fiorio. Just mm -hmm. a couple follow-up questions regarding pandemic. So in regards to the pandemic, is swimming still allowed? Uh, the, the athletes would know better than me. <laughs> um, I currently have two swimmers in grade nine who are both still training. Uh, they are not competing, however. Uh, their competitions have been put on hold, but they are still training extensively. Um, both of them are part of the, I believe, the provincial development program. One is working their way towards the national development program uh, through NIAC. So uh, NIAC is the North York Aquatics Club. Um, so both of them are still training quite extensively, even during the pandemic. Thank you, Mr. Fiorio. Um, this question is, how many people have gotten scholarships from this program? It varies from year to year. Um, uh, last year, we had two students graduate from the program and, and earned uh, scholarships down to the NCAA. Um, the program also will help students get merit-based scholarships, which are based basically on their academic performance in high school. Um, so in, in that case, it's really hard to, to say, and it depends on if, they're, if, you're, if you're asking the question related to athletic scholarships. Last year, we had two. Uh, the year before that, we had, I think, two or three. The year before that, I think we had four. Um, so every year we get like, you know, two to five students who are um, gaining an athletic scholarship down to the states for NCAA. Uh, but I would say uh, at least probably around 75% of the athlete, athletes in the program are also gaining merit-based scholarships, which are basically uh, scholarships that are academic-based. So based on their academic performance in high school and school giving, uh, scholarships based on their academics. Great, thank you. Um, we have a number of questions regarding the interview process. Is there an interview process for the APCA program? And then what does that look like in terms of COVID-19? Yeah, so normally there, so there, there, there always has been an interview for APCA. Uh, it's a very informal interview. It, it, you don't have to wear a suit and a tie and, and prepare really. Uh, it's just for us to get to know one another a little bit better. Uh, we, we talk a little bit one-on-one -on -one, uh, and also with your parents. So your parents are required to join the meeting uh, or the interview, I should say. And also um, we basically just kind of uh, start to create a timetable that suits your training demands and accommodates your training schedule. Uh, 
Uh, so really that's all the interview is. Um, it, and the bulk of it is spent uh, just making sure that we have a timetable that suits your needs. Um, and with regards to COVID-19 and how we're gonna conduct the interviews this year, it's gonna all be virtual. So either on Zoom or, or something like that. So we'll still be able to conduct the interviews virtually. Thank you, Mr. Fiorio. Next question is, where should we send the optional application form if we're applying to two special programs? So you're going to send the optional attendance form uh, to each of the coordinators, I believe. So um, for me, you're going to send it to obviously me if you're applying for APCA. Uh, if you're applying to HMST, you're going to send it to Ms. Uh, Susan Chin. And if you're applying to Cyber Arts, you're going to send it to Mr. Martin Simpson. Thank you. So with the pandemic going on, are you still going to take athletes into competition? Can you repeat the question, Ms. Lamka? Yeah, so I think that there might be, um, I think maybe you just have to clarify um, about athletes and their competitions, but the question is with the pandemic still going, it, it says, are you going to still take athletes into competition? Uh, okay, so I guess let me clarify a little bit about the program. I don't take athletes to any competitions. Uh, all of the athletes have their competitions scheduled uh, with their own clubs or teams or whoever they're competing with. Um, those, uh, those competitions can be accommodated uh, at the school level. So if a student is away, for example, for uh, a hockey tournament on a Friday night or you know, for a Friday for the whole day, for example, or even Thursday and Friday, uh, then we can make arrangements to support that student uh, at the school level to make sure that they don't fall too far behind and that they get caught up with their schoolwork. Uh, the teachers at Northview are really good about preparing the work that students are going to miss. Um, so that way they, again, can stay caught up with the rest of the class. This day and age now, uh, it, it, you know, all teachers are have a virtual platform. So whether it's Google Classroom or Brightspace or some sort of other learning platform, uh, all of the lessons and worksheets and that kind of thing are usually posted online. So um, we don't really have any issues with students getting, uh, keeping or getting caught up or staying caught up with, with the work that they miss when they're away or abroad. So, uh, but just to clarify, I don't, um, I don't take students on competitions. The competitions are scheduled by, this, by the teams or, or clubs that they're representing. Um, and um, Obviously, with, with regards to local athletics at Northview, uh, all of our athletics are currently on hold due to the pandemic. So um, uh, if and when those, those the, you know, the pandemic, you know, loosens and things start to get better, then we could take our local athletics uh, teams to, to different games or competitions, but uh, that's probably not going to be for a little bit, a little bit. Thank you, Mr. Fiorio. There are a couple questions regarding um, application. And so what, specifically with swimming. So what are the questions and I'm just gonna kind of loop a couple of them together. So sure. for swimming, is my swimming report card allowed to show my progress? And then link to another question, can I include my swimming medals and rib ribbons in my application process? Yeah, sure. So like swimming medals and ribbons and, and competition results would be something that you would want to include for sure. Um, a, a swimming report card, I guess it, um, it could be something like if it's from your coach, um, like, like a, it's like a performance appraisal or something like that, then absolutely. That would be something that, um, uh, could definitely be useful and, 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 and help to be considered for this program. So, uh, definitely. Absolutely. Okay, great. Um, next question. If accepted, can a student in the APCA program use their spares as catch-ups for their academics? Yes, sorry, I, I think it just cut out a little bit, but I think it was about uh, using spares to catch up. Yeah, for academics. Yeah, absolutely. So um, if a student, if a student athlete has uh, an evening training, uh, you know, regimen or schedule where they don't really require a spare at the beginning or the end of the day. Uh, so let's say a student trains from 6 till 9 p.m. Or, okay, or something like that. They don't really require any accommodations or flexibility in their timetable. So what we would do then in that case probably is uh, give them a spare um, in the middle of the day. So uh, the way Northview works is that there's, um, uh, we technically have five periods in the day. It's a little bit confusing, but 
essentially there's two morning classes, two afternoon classes, and then there's a lunch class or a lunchtime period. Uh, so what we would do then is um, sandwich uh, the lunchtime with also uh, another spare. And so that way a student would have um, potentially a lunch class through APCA, or they would have an e-learning class um, with blended learning, or and then they would also have a spare again in the middle of the day to help them uh, get caught up on any schoolwork. Uh, and the reason for that is because, you know, from 6 to 9 p.m., like I mentioned, if a student has training or sorry, an athlete has training at that time, it's going to be difficult for them to do homework uh, because they're training. So that middle period of the day can be used for students to make sure that they get all of their homework and studying done for their school. Great, thank you. The next question is, um, where could we find the recorded presentations from tonight? The recorded presentations will be posted on the school's uh, probably main webpage. Uh, I wouldn't count on, count on it being uploaded tonight, probably by tomorrow uh, at the very earliest. Great, thank you. Um, similar to the swim question, should I include my results from track meet? Yep, absolutely. Again, that can be included in the application for sure. Wonderful. Um, should, should the optional application form be different for each program or one application for all the programs? Um, so if you're applying to any of the specialized programs, you're going to apply through, we have one single Google form. And through that Google form, you can indicate the, uh, the programs that you'd wish to apply to. Um, and so as you're going through the application, the Google form, uh, it will basically stop at each of the uh, um, programs that you've requested to be applied to, and you will have an opportunity to fill in the information in those particular, uh, for those particular programs. So we have one application process, one Google form uh, for all um, specialty programs, and you just indicate which one and it'll take you through it. And it's pretty, uh, pretty user friendly. Thank you, Mr. Fiorio. I'm not sure if we answered this question, so I just want to make sure. The question was, does the training for the sport need to occur during a certain time? That might have been our first question. I'm not sure. I think that was our first question. And okay, perfect. So no, uh, we can completely, uh, I'll just quickly mention again, uh, every athlete is completely different. So depending on the sport, depending on the team uh, or the club that an athlete is training with, um, training occurs at all different kind, uh, all different times of the day. So we can be flexible and accommodate any athlete who is um, training at any time of the day. I believe we were at the end of our question list. Awesome. Um, just let me double check. That was a bit of a marathon. It was definitely a marathon. Thank you for your time and your answer. No, thank you. And Miss Miss Chow, thank you so much for helping me moderate. I wouldn't have been able to do it on my own. So big round of applause <laughs> to Miss Slomka and Miss Chow for, for jumping on here. I definitely owe them um, a treat. <laughs> no, no problem at all. Happy to hear all the questions and um, to see all the interest in the program. It is really a great program. So yeah, so if there's um, if there's no other burning questions, then I think we're done for the evening. Um, so at any time, if you have any other questions that pop up, uh, please feel free to reach out to me. Um, all of my information is located on the, uh, the school website and under uh, the APCA webpage. Um, so if you would like to reach out to me for whatever reason, uh, please either phone me or send me an email and I'll be able to answer your questions. So thank you all so much for attending tonight. Really do appreciate it. Uh, I look forward to, um, to obviously receiving your applications. Um, again, remember the deadline is January 8th, 2021. Um, so please uh, start to prepare your applications. Um, and hello. And, um, and please uh, get them in as early as possible. So we can start the process of getting you considered for this program. Okay. 
Best of luck to everyone in their applications. Awesome. Okay, take care, everyone. Have a great evening. Thank you so much. Bye. Bye, take care. Thank you. Bye, thank you. Take care. Okay.